Hi, everybody. Welcome to the fourth and final night of virtual evenings for educators conversing in clay. We can go to the next slide. My name is Laura Schilling and I'm the content specialist for teacher programs. I am a white woman with curly blonde hair and I'm wearing a white t-shirt and a sort of pea green sweater tonight. For those of you who have been with us for other events in this program, thank you so much for coming back. I know it's a lot over the course of two weeks, especially around the holidays. And for those of you attending for the first time tonight, a very warm welcome as well. If you would like to access captions throughout the program, please click show captions on the toolbar at the bottom of your screen. My colleague Brian Sohn is providing tech support, so if you have any issues accessing captions or any tech-related questions, please send him a private message. Next slide. LACMA recognizes that we occupy land in Los Angeles County, originally and still inhabited and cared for by the Tongva, Tataviam, Serrano, Peach, and Chumash peoples. We honor and pay respect to their elders and descendants, past, present, and emerging, as they continue their stewardship of the lands and waters in Los Angeles County. Next slide. And some of you have seen this slide four times now, but I really wanna make sure that we make you aware of our curricular resources. Um, we create these for every Evenings for Educators program and they include all kinds of great goodies about the artworks that we discuss in the programs, um, information, discussion questions, lesson plans, um, all sorts of great stuff. And I'm putting the link in the chat right now. So you can check those out um, now or later. And uh, once again, if you're participating for salary point credit or any other kind of credit, be sure to fill out the survey that I will share in the chat at the end of tonight's program. And if you have any questions about the different credit options, always feel free to send me a private message in the chat. Next slide. And I'm now going to introduce tonight's teaching artist, Katie Lipsit. She is a collage artist, illustrator, and teaching artist at LACMA, the Holocaust Museum, and the Armory. She earned her BA in art history from Barnard College, Columbia University. Thanks for being with us, Katie. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to Basket of Abundance. Um, I'm Katie Lipsit, and I'm a teaching artist at LACMA. Uh, tonight, let's see, I'm going to describe myself. I have black and gray curly hair, glasses and white skin. I'm wearing a red t-shirt that says LACMA on it and uh, a black and white apron and a black sweatshirt. Um, tonight, we're going to look at two objects from the Conversing in Clay show and then create our own basket of abundance inspired by these two objects. So um, before we start, I just want to make sure everyone has the materials. So next slide, please. Um, okay, let's look at this list. Uh, I wrote a whole newspaper. I know that's a little, a little crazy. Um, you don't, you're not actually going to need the whole newspaper, but I like it so that if you make mistakes, um, I could have been much more limited, but that way you just have extra paper. Uh, scissors, glue stick, and or white glue or craft glue. Um, I like craft glue. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan because it's so sturdy and works <laughs> really well. Um, and uh, well, markers or crayons, I'll explain later. Um, those are not necessary tonight. Um, a pencil and uh, a sheet of copy paper. The three by five cards we do not need for tonight. That's for a classroom setting, uh, for which I'll explain later. <laughs> okay, next slide, please. So these are the two objects that we're looking at tonight that are in conversation with each other actually at the museum or uh, the curators put them in conversation. And I, 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 love, this, I love this picture because you can really see um, their similarities and differences right away. Uh, their shadows are definitely similar um, and they're both basket-like. Um, however, one is from the 1800s and one is contemporary. Um, and uh, let's look at them separately too. Uh, so next slide, please. So um, since we're in a virtual space, I'd love to ask you to communicate in the chat. Uh, I'll ask some questions here and there, and I hope you will uh, communicate. Later at the end, you'll have an opportunity to actually, you know, use your voice. Um, so uh, would anyone like to just share what they're seeing here and uh, any associations or feelings about it? You can put that in the chat. Um, 
what is it? What does it remind you of? Anybody? Oh, hello. <laughs> Here we go. Um, so Lara Schilling says it reminds me of a wicker basket. Um, I'll just, I'll just, I won't re read the names. That's silly. It reminds me of the fruit basket on my dining table, a uh, white clay or ceramic basket, a white basket. The color is very relaxing. The open weave reminds me of a wicker basket. Okay. I think that we can all agree that it's a basket. Um, so uh, that's basically what I wanted to get from you. Thank you for uh, contributing to that conversation there. Um, it is entitled Twig Basket. And um, just to give you a little background about it, um, it's, it is by Josiah Wedgwood. And I think many people know this name Wedgwood. Um, this is from this, this piece itself is from the 1800s. Um, and Wedgwood is known as the father of British potter, pottery. He basically transformed pottery from being this like rough handmade thing, you know, into a mass produced middle-class status symbol, which it still is today, which I think is kind of amazing. Um, he was very much part of the industrial revolution. And this is meant to look like an everyday basket from that period, but he kind of transforms it into this middle-class decorative honestly, pretty useless object by, um, you know, it's not twig at all. It is creamware, which is something that he uh, devised. He's actually kind of a scientist, um, which was lighter and more durable than porcelain. So it was a great substitute that he came up with. Um, and uh, this object has a lot of meaning still for people um, to this day. I mean, I know people who collect Wedgwood, uh, although I think that light blue with the white on it is tends to be the more traditional uh, Wedgwood style. Um, okay, let's look at the next slide, please. So we can see, I think a lot of you were uh, at last night's, um, no, two nights ago, the talk that Courtney Leonard did. And this is her piece called Abundance Red Algae from 2016. So it's truly contemporary. Um, and uh, I'd like to ask you, what do you see? And uh, what are your thoughts about it? Same kind of question. Uh, do you have any associations with it? Any, any feelings about it? Seaweed, oh, someone says it looks like seaweed, interesting. Anyone else? I know a lot of people, I, I recognize people from the other night. So I know there are some people who were there. So who might know a lot more about it. Uh, makes me think of an organic material. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about it um, just to give you some background here. Um, Oh, wait, there's a few more. Someone says netting. Someone else says, looks like a sun. Someone else says, it makes me feel trapped. Another person says a rusty barb from the ocean. Ooh, I like that, thank you. And a fishnet, yes. Um, yes, so these are all kind of netting, fishnets. Um, it's much more organic. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about, about the background and then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, this is an art object created by contemporary ceramicist Courtney M. Leonard, who we are so lucky that she came and spoke two nights ago. Uh, her work pertains to issues of the Shinnecock coastal natives of Long Island, New York, of which she is part of. Um, this piece is a part of breach, which has multiple meanings. Uh, the idea of the whale that breaches and the whale shape of Long Island and the concept of a breach of contract with the indigenous people. Breach is about the Shinnecock people whose lives have been deeply affected by climate change, rising waters, and warming temperatures. This specific piece that we're looking at is called Abundance Red Algae, and it was created in reaction to a very specific moment that happened in which there was an algae bloom that then created a huge kill-off of the Shinnecock food source, which, was, which is fish. 
Um, in form, abundance is inspired by the indigenous fish baskets, as many of you noticed, um, and fishing nets. However, this basket cannot be filled with fish because of the lack of healthy fish created by algae blooms. Um, the earthenware clay, clay is delicate and looks rotted, rendering it functionless. The rim of this basket is open like a flower blooming. Um, it is, uh, if anyone wants to sort of drop in the chat, the differences between these two, between the Wedgwood and this uh, Courtney Leonard piece, the abundance. It could, I, I don't mind just total visual differences. Um, this idea of abundance, she's being really tongue in cheek, um, although that sounds too light. Um, thank you. Light and soft versus dark and heavy. Lovely. Very nice. I know for myself, I really want to touch Courtney Leonard's piece. I'm a little frightened because I'm afraid it might be like rough. Um, whereas the other one I know is smooth. Um, so that's very different. Um, so I love these two pieces. I feel like they're vastly different from each other. One is definitely intentionally political, the Courtney Leonard piece. And then the other one is uh, intentionally uh, kind of middle-class status symbol-y. Oh, let me read some stuff from the chat. Refined and, and object for presentation versus natural objects suggesting different use. Um, someone else says color and lines. Okay. Well, thank you for contributing to the conversation. Um, I do, let's see. Oh, no. That's where we are. So um, if you're doing this in a classroom setting, definitely day one is introducing the two art pieces. And obviously comparing and contrasting uh, is a great opportunity for students to speak or to write, which I know we're always looking for those opportunities. Um, and uh, the reason you have this white paper is so you can make a list. And this list is going to be so that you can figure out what is your art going to be about, okay? You're going to make a basket about abundance. So um, what I would suggest is that um, you make like two columns. And one is what is abundant in your life? Ooh, actually, before we even go to that, I just realized we have to come with, up with a group uh, we have to decide what does abundant mean. Okay. So would anyone like to uh, put in the chat what they think or what they feel abundant means? Many, plenty, more than one needs. Oh, I, I think it's more than one needs. I like that. Yeah. Plenty, more than one. It's like, it's like, it's a little, it's a, it, it, it it's, feels very lush to me, you know, more than enough. Yeah, more than enough. Um, surplus, nice. So I think um, that's the first thing in the class. You're gonna wanna come up with that. What does what abundant mean? That is not a word that um, kids probably know or use. So, but it's a good one, right? Um, I also really want, in doing this workshop, I really wanted to make a, a positive spin. Obviously, we can always talk about what people don't have, but and and but I'd rather not. <laughs> um, so abundant, what do you have in your life that's in abundance is on one side of the column. And on the other side of the column is what what you would like. How do I frame it? Hold on, let me look at my words. Um on the other side, write what could be more abundant in the world. So for instance, on one side, um, I could have love and friends. I'm, I have abundance of love and friends, thankfully. And what I would like there to be more of, of abundance in the world is acceptance and generosity and kindness. 
And then from there, I have to make a decision. What is my basket going to be about? Is it going to be more personal, like about love, about friends, about what I have a lot of or more than enough of? Or is it going to be about what I want to see in the world, what I, what I want to see more of in the world? So it sort of depends on the age of your students, um, you know, what, what feels right in that context. Um, and that will also determine uh, how you're going to decorate your basket. Um, would anyone like to put in the chat what, what they would like to have? What would their theme be? Would it be what's abundant in your life? And you can be very specific, like I said, love, friends. Or would it be um, what you hope there's more of? in the world. Does anyone want to share? Oh, there we go. Kindness, what I would hope my students would practice more. Yeah. I mean, you can you can um they could also pick from a well, that's probably not as much fun. I was going to say you could they could pick from a list of things of a list of themes, you know, positive themes. Um, but let me show you, um, like I did a, an example of, let me get in the right spot here, um, an example of an abundant basket. Sorry, it's kind of a weird angle. Actually, I'm gonna show it to you right here. Um, this basket has sort of, it's like it's too a little too much love. <laughs> but not in a bad way. <laughs> I'm trying to get you so you can see it. So this basket, which we're going to make, I don't know if you can see this, it's actually not woven per se. So it's not in and out. Um, here's what the plain one. Okay. And we're going to make that right now. So um, this is all made of recycled newspaper, which everyone should have access to. Um, this one that I, that I made about love has some words in it. It has it's collaged. Um, you know, your students could take it. You could you could make it and then decorate it afterwards, uh, or you can decorate it while you're creating it. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, I'm seeing more themes. So someone's going to do it about the health for their family. Someone else is going to do it about self compassion. Someone's going to else is going to do it about understanding reflection. Um, so I love the, the structure of a basket as being full of abundance because it's something you can really carry, you know, you can carry things in here, which I love that idea. Um, okay. So I am going to start creating. Now I recommend that you do it with me. Um, if you were planning on making it today, because, um, I think that it's one of those things that it's easy. If you watch me do it and then do it afterwards, you may forget a step, you know? Um, and uh, can we switch it over? Oh, let's see. I think we probably just want, just want this. Oh, there we go. Thank you so much. Um, so we're going to have eight strips of newspaper. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut. To, I took one sheet, a full sheet of paper and I'm cutting that in half. Okay, now I'm gonna cut each one of these in half. Now notice I am not measuring. However, you can. Um, this is always, I know there's always a standard for measurement in math. And so um, if you wanna do that, great. It's also can be done without it, right? Uh, it kind of depends on what you're trying to achieve. So that's four strips right there. Um, I'm just gonna demonstrate how to fold them and glue them. And then we, we wanna end up with eight total, okay? So let me, I'm just gonna put these aside so you can see better. Hold on, tie all these up. Okay, so each one of these strips you fold in half,
and at, sorry, glue stick. I'm just doing glue stick. It's faster right now for this demonstration purposes. However, I think if, you know, if I wasn't demonstrating, I'd probably be doing the, uh, the craft glue. So that's one. So that piece of paper is in half. And now I'm going to go in half again. Okay. And you'll notice, even if I don't measure, it still comes out okay. Has a more uh, human made feeling. Okay. So basically what I'm creating now, we need eight of these. Okay. So I'm going to do it again. So you can follow me. Um, you can just, meaning you can copy what I'm doing or do it with me. So I'm actually going to put a strip of glue and fold this. And then I'm going to fold it. I mean, yeah, fold it again. If you have any questions as I'm creating this, write them in the chat. So that's two. I want to say also, uh, when we get to the basket, the, the part where the basket actually comes together, there is a way that you can actually do weave, you know, so that it's just, it's a little more complicated. What I like about this version, it's um, easier for the younger set, meaning like fourth grade or whatever. Okay, so I have four of these. I need four more. Wait, I wasn't finished with that one. Okay. Okay, so four strips. These are gonna be the parts of our basket. Now I need one more piece. I'm gonna move that away so that you can see. Now, now I'm gonna open up another sheet of paper. Um, I don't know why I said I needed a whole newspaper. I guess we needed a lot less than that, but that, that way you can mess up, right? So I'm cutting this sheet in half, just like we did before. And then each one of these get cut in half. This one gets cut in half. And you can tell I'm just eyeballing this. Um, okay. Okay, folding that in half and now in half again. I know this is a bit repetitive, but hopefully you're all doing it with me and then you'll have a basket by the end. <laughs> Um, three more to go. Okay. I have my nice little stack of these pieces that will become my basket, right? Two more that I need to just glue. Okay. One more. And I actually feel like if you were doing this in a class setting, you, uh, you probably won't get farther than making these strips, you know, day one. If day one is uh, compare and contrast the art pieces, decide what your theme is. Well, maybe that's, that's all of day one right there. <laughs> it depends on how much time you allot, you know. Um, So once they have eight strips, they're ready 
to make a basket. And um, so basically we're gonna set aside one and then the rest of these we're gonna turn into, <clears throat> I'm gonna basically crisscross them and um, I'm gonna glue each layer. So I'm using my white glue or my craft glue, I should say. Oh, hello, come on. Okay. I'm gonna, making an X. Okay. I'm gonna put one here. You can tell I'm not being very perfectionistic about this, right? Now, this would be the point at which you might wanna start adding something about your theme. Um, I know I showed you guys that I, I, I did it after the fact. I don't know, I'm trying to allow you guys to see this and I'm having trouble. Um, so I added lace and I added collage, um, but that was after the fact. You could certainly color this with crayon. You could put words on it. It could kind of be like a place for poetry even, you know? So I'm just gluing and layering, um, kind of making it a starburst. Now I have to admit that at the very end, I think it's really nice to staple the center, um, which I will show you. Oh wait, no, wait, what am I doing? I need two of these to make up to make the top. Oops. Okay. Um, okay, so. I, I, sorry, I, I made a mistake. I have two aside, put aside, and then six that make the starburst, okay? Now, if you have a stapler, then at this point is a good time, even though you've glued it, it's a good time to just kind of do one staple in the middle. And that does help to kind of keep it together. Um, this will be, actually, I think it's the other way the staples on the bottom. So you're gonna be basically bending these up to create the, uh, the, the, bot the inside of the basket, okay? Which you can see here, right? Um, these two pieces that were extra are gonna become the, the edge of the opening, right? The, so it's gonna be like a loop, okay? So I'm actually gonna put this aside a, for a moment. And then I'm gonna make, I'm gonna glue, sorry, let me make this so you can really see it better. These two pieces are gonna become the, like I said, the, the opening of the basket. So I'm gonna glue here and I'm gonna add this here. And again, I'm gonna staple it for our purposes only so that it kind of like stays in place. Um, and again, this is a great time to color. You, like that's why I have crayons and markers listed is that this is a time where maybe there's colors associated with health or with kindness or with um, reflection or words. There could be words here. Um, they could be collaged on, they'd be written on. This, this is, so you could do that as you're making the basket or it could be after the fact. Um, so now I'm going to make a loop. This is kind of square-ish right now. Let me try to bend it. You have to kind of mold it a bit. Um, I'm gonna overlap it. Um, hopefully that will be about the right size. Again, I just stapled it for our purposes, um, but I'm gonna add a bit of glue so that doesn't flop up open. Okay. And now like I'm gonna make it kind of roundish now. So here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take each one of these and attach it. Now you decide, are you gonna attach it on the inside of the loop? So here's the loop, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm trying to see where it's, here we go. So I like, I think I think inside, or you could do outside. It's really, a, it's a design artistic decision. Now, again, I'm going to staple, 
because I want to be able to finish this to answer questions. So I'm stapling each one of these to the inside. The other way to go is you could alternate, right? It could be one on the inside, one on the outside. Um, or two on the outside, <laughs> just making it up. If you wanna do patterns, of course, always great. Um, I'm gonna, this one's two inside, two outside. That's what I'm doing right now. So now, how's that going? You might have to like kind of bend it so that it ends up being more concave. Uh, oh, okay. Two inside now, two outside. <clears throat> okay. So this, like I said, is not actually woven, right? It's a basket, but it's not woven the way we think of as baskets being woven. Of course, you could take paper and weave in and out, in and out, and that's fine too. That also would be one way to add some element about your theme. I was also thinking, yeah, I mean, you know, this could, it could all be writing. It really depends on how, how, what this vehicle becomes in your classroom setting. Okay, so now I have my, ba my basket. Um, let's see, make it so you can see, there's the bottom kind of looks like a hat or a crown. Um, so what I was gonna say is now, oh, what I was gonna tell you is if you have, if you are, if you've made this as I've been working, you can take a picture of it. And um, I don't know if there's, um, it's not in the chat yet, I think, or is it? Oh, there it is. Hello, thank you, Laura. Um, Laura has just added the link and what you can do is you, you can upload a picture of your work to that slideshow and we can share it at the end, okay? Um, so if you would like to do that, that would be terrific. Um, we have about five more minutes, six more minutes of working. Um, so you can make your basket. If you have any questions, this is a time for me to answer them. Uh, answer your basket questions or any other type of questions. Um, and then we will go into breakout rooms and talk about uh, the themes we chose, uh, our baskets, and how we would use this in our classroom. Okay. Um, any questions? Write them in the chat. I'm here. Um, but this is a time too, like it would be, you could color this even when it's become has become three-dimensional probably markers would be the easiest thing crayon really would be hard um you could paint it as well uh watercolor could be interesting although it might fall apart a little bit um so i leave that part up to you but i i, I again show this example this one's very wonky um <laughs> that's why i turned it into the example um this one is sort of like abundant love. I kind of imagined it like a cornucopia, you know, with the love pouring out of it, even the, the lace on the top and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna leave this here. And if there are no questions, terrific. Um, oh, hello. Painting with a bit of liquid starch might help to strengthen it a bit further. Yeah, that's true. Um, there's always like gesso is great or Mod, po Mod Podge, which is expensive, but gesso is, um, is well, it's like acrylic, you know. Um, liquid starch is probably the cheaper way, although I'm a little afraid of, you probably need to use gloves, right? Um, I mean, it really just depends. The other thing is collage or when it's at starburst form before it turns into a basket, you can do all the coloring then and the words and the writing then, right? And then you transform it into a basket. And then the inside of the basket has all this, it has abundant writing or abundant words, right? So um, yeah, think about, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in how you wanna use this. I don't know, kind of depends if you are a regular classroom teacher or an art teacher, 
you know, how you see using this. Um, and also, of course, your age group. Um, I think, I think fourth grade and older. Um, but it is an opportunity, definitely. There's, there's some good ELA stuff with speaking and writing. Um, okay, so watered down liquid glue could work. Oh yes, I like that. Yes, I like liquid. I forgot about that. Watered down liquid glue, very good idea. Um, you mean like white glue, I'm assuming. Uh, you don't even have to water it down so much, I don't think. You can put also a bit of acrylic in white glue and then that kind of goes a long way um and that does harden that's nice um yeah and I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of trying out these materials so um so uh we have a three more minutes uh for people i don't know if you're still working i don't know where people are at um and i hope you will take a picture of of what you created even if it's just raw newspaper um and uh i don't know why i'm keeping it this way it should be this way right <laughs> um so take a picture and upload it to that link please before we move into the um breakout room we're going to be in the breakout room for 10 minutes and then we'll come back out and um and then we can share the slideshow which hopefully there will be a slideshow to share <laughs> So I look forward to that. And I will be out here in the big room um, if you want to talk here. Um, if you if you're averse to a um to a breakout room. But we still have a couple more minutes. I was thinking also you could make some paper mache things that would go inside this basket as well, which would be fun. Although paper mache takes a while, but um it's pretty cheap. All right, I'm friends. Gonna, I'm going to leave the meeting. Can I just share what I would do real quick before you do breakout? Because I have to go feed my kids. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, I was thinking it would be a great way to do like cooperative, you know, like a, everybody makes a different strand and we can like build them together. So like by oh, table beautiful. and yeah. then um, it's like a little community and a way of building that sense of community in your classroom. I love and that. You could do it with any grade. I was even thinking preschool because that's really my passion, especially at preschool. Yeah. But um, it's a great way to bring us all together one strand at a time and oh, binding us nice. all to make a bigger, stronger thing. So. Oh, I love that. That's yeah. so nice. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. I love the idea. So thanks for having me. I'm sorry I have to go. I would have loved I to hear totally everybody understand. else's idea. <laughs> Thank you for coming. All, All right. right. Happy have a good night. Everyone. Thank you. Take care. All right. Um, so everyone else, you will get an opportunity to share later. Oh, wait, I'm just going to read this. Um, it says, uh, I was thinking you could weave construction paper. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Um, that's a great idea. Weaving construction paper, fabric, wrapping paper, um, brown paper. Um, yeah, that absolutely is open to you. Um, okay, so I, you are going to be put into a uh, into a breakout room um, where you can discuss the piece you made, the ideas you have on, in using this in your classroom, um, and then we'll see you back here. I hope some people were able to upload uh, a photograph. Otherwise, um, we'll just meet back here and talk. <laughs> uh, is it happening? Everybody has been assigned at this thank point. Thank you. So okay, thank you. Everybody can feel free to move to the rooms. I appreciate that. Um, I'll stay here, okay? If you want to chat with me here.
If anyone who stayed out here, uh, is it Noel and Christina, if you want to talk about what you did or share what you did, I suddenly wanted to try weaving. <laughs> I wanted to weave some strips in here, see how that looks. I think it'll look good. I probably have to do quite a few. Let's see, I'm trying to see it so you guys could see it. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't able to do it. I was driving. Oh, hi. Yeah, hi, Christina. Hi. I was driving, hi, but I was listening. And yeah. yeah, I really love the idea of either weaving the strips, but also I really liked what um, the person that just left shared about yeah. a group uh, activity. Yeah, that would be, and just really capturing that essence of that collaboration and mm -hmm. shared community. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, as long as students can do it, right? I mean, they can all help each other. I, I know there's always kids who can do things and then other kids can help them, you know, especially if they work in groups, that can be really nice. Um, but this is a very, it, the actual structure of it isn't very hard. So hopefully that would help, you know, so that they, there could also be, like you're saying, additional things like the weaving. I don't know if you guys can see, I'm starting to weave it. Um, and you could also be dealing with patterns too, which I'm realizing as I'm pulling some scraps of paper out of my desk. Um, I mean, my drawing table. <laughs> Let's see how this looks. Here, actually it has like a different kind of mood. You could, you could certainly write things on these strips as well, right? Um, would you be able to add paint to the newspaper or would yeah. you encourage that or would that just make it too soft? Well, I think, I think like we were saying, um, acrylic, well, mm. nobody, nobody has money for acrylic, but, um, you could do white glue mixed with a little paint. Um, you know, yeah. like El I know everyone has Elmer's right. Or some kind of white glue. Um, you can mix that with a little paint, like even a little acrylic with white glue works. I haven't tried it with, um, you know, what's that cheaper paint that people usually have? Tempera. Tempera. Um, but I think it might work. I, I would, I would try it or look at, I mean, certainly look it up on, <laughs> on the internet. Um, but sometimes you don't need a lot to add to it. You know, you could have like a little dish of white glue and you could, they, they could, you could mix colors. Um, but white glue, you can paint on it and that would become hard, you know? So that would be good. Whereas like if you just did temper, it would become soggy and probably fall apart. Um, but markers would work too. Okay. Oh, that's an idea. Yeah. Or even maybe doing the markers before you start before. the basket. Yeah. I think before when you have the strip. So first you would make the strips. Then you could draw on both sides of the markers. I mean, of the, of the strips. And then you could put them together. Um, I think that would work. If I didn't get into a group, is there any way to get into a group or is it too late? <laughs> um, I don't know. Okay. It's okay if I didn't. I mean, who is, who's speaking? Noelle Parker. I've got oh, hi. Um, creation, but I don't know why you didn't get it in. Well, um, it, did, it did. And I said, I wanted to join later because oh. I was to take a picture of this and then it, oh. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Uh, is there any way that she can make it into another group? Yeah. Um, so it looks like you're in room two. Um, would you like me to move you there right now? Sure. Thank All right you. Then. Cool. Thank you. Oh, then there's there's Beverly. Hi, Beverly. Hi, yes. If you could pop me into a room, that would be great. Done and done. Thank you. be able to join.
I love how this project feels like a foundation for so many different avenues. Yeah, yeah, very flexible, mm -hmm. um, which is nice. I mean, I'm always, I guess I should have asked that question. I'm always interested, are people art teachers or are they like regular classroom teachers also? Like how, you know, maybe they're more classroom teachers. Oh, um, Yvonne, did you just come back from a room or you just joined us? I didn't see you there before. Do they have access to the lesson plan or is that just online later? Yeah, the lesson plan is in the story map. Later. It's it's on it's online. Yes. Yeah, so they have to use the link to the story maps to access it. Right. Like in a month or something? No, it's online right now. Oh, it's online right now. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So Christina, I don't know since you missed um. Did you hear that? It's it, it's in a story map. If you look um, on the website, yeah, should, yeah, okay, I have, so you can I have, you can find that. Okay, yeah, I have them bookmarked. I was just okay. thinking about Laura's um, comment. Um, I'm out of the classroom. I'm I'm a coordinator, yeah. and I do um, instructional curriculum. So we uh, we yeah. work on designing our own curriculum, and I was just thinking what Laura was saying, it's great because I could see this being used as different types of conversations, right? One is mm -hmm. how we share materials, how we can, as someone had put up cycle, you know, so you can come at this from an, uh, a strictly environmental, but also mm -hmm. a social aspect as well. Sure. And how, you know, talking about, I know a lot of our fourth and fifth grade uh, social studies standards are, um, on how native peoples and indigenous cultures um, in the Americas use their natural resources mm -hmm. as part of their culture. Right. And I was just, I attended the lecture this week and it was just such a perfect connection. Mm -hmm. And also talking about what's our responsibility. You yeah. know, I felt like her lecture really touched on these and these could be a, you know, an additional conversation. Oh, um, I love that. Yeah you know, what, what is our responsibility? And even that whole thing about collaboratively building one, what's our responsibility towards each other, towards the environment? Mm -hmm. So just a lot of, a lot of multiple entryways here. And then of course the art. Yeah. Oh, that's like the final thing, but mm -hmm. you know, also even the idea that like groups are working together to create their theme within that, you know, mm -hmm. like, like what colors are we going to use? What materials are we, you know, whatever, whatever they need to, whatever their, the factors are, but that they collaborate together to have those conversations and to physically work together as well, you know, which is yeah. important in our society. Um, definitely, so. definitely. And that, that's one of the things that we're, um, you know, like uh, one of the skills that we try to develop with the students are uh, decision making. Mm -hmm. um, so in the group, how are you going to make a decision? How are you going to collaborate? But again, even what ideas are you trying to convey? Again, I'm going back to the lecture. Yeah, we had like what ideas? Um, because her her lecture really opened my eyes to the multi-layered um, mm -hmm. aspect of the idea she was conveying, not only was she reflecting on the culture and her culture in the past and the materials, but also making a commentary of the fragility yes. of these materials and what our responsibilities are. And so what, what do they want to convey? And even yeah. the idea of light, um, I would have never thought, I would have totally missed that had I gone just to the museum and not listened to the lecture about mm -hmm. how the shadows, yeah, uh, just even went around it. Yeah. Well, actually, if you go to the museum, I think that those, uh, there, there is videos incorporated into that exhibit. And the videos, oh. I, yeah, I think the videos are there on the wall. So they, you probably, maybe you wouldn't have missed it. Um, <laughs> so and also the shadows are pretty clear in and that's what's really nice the way it's lit 
yes, in the it's case. Good. It's really nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely, um, if you go to other museums and then at LACMA, the, the, way they, the way they display things is so thoughtful and beautiful, I have to say. And I'm, I guess maybe I'm a little biased, but, um, but I, I really feel it sometimes, uh, you know, it's not overwhelming either. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of museums can be overwhelming to me anyway. Um, yeah. and, and I love art, but <laughs> just sometimes it can be a lot. Yeah, no, it was, it was, it was a great lecture. A great, a great, um, uh, I, I felt like I learned a lot. I learned a lot, um, yeah. from, from this, from today's, but also from the lecture and from just having that background, um, yeah. knowledge. Yeah, I'm so I'm glad you went to both. Thank you. Yes, yes. Even though you were driving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Today I was, I had to work late. We have an event. So I was listening as I was driving. I just got home a little bit ago when when I think you were um, creating already. So okay. I got home. it was a little too late. Right. Well, thank Next you. Time. Thank you. Well, everyone's, everyone's coming back from the um, breakout room, mm -hmm. rooms. And um, Maybe there's, is there, are there any photographs to share? Any, any slide show? Well, let's see, let's wait for everyone to come back first, right? Yes, they should all be coming back in about 15 seconds. Okay, thank you. When I see people in their classroom, I'm like, wow, you're staying, you're staying there late. Um, so once everyone's back, maybe we can see the uh, if there's any any images in the slideshow to share. Okay. And as we share, if they're if they're here, um, people can feel free to unmute and uh, talk to us about what what they did. Is there anything here? Oh, ooh, that's cool. I didn't have newspaper, so I used a magazine. My theme was self-compassion. Yeah, that um, was me. Um, so yeah, I don't have newspaper, but I did have- um, That's great. A magazine. Fantastic. And, uh, my, I love that. I think I said last time um, when we did the, the fruit, I think the first week, and my goal was to not be really exacting and because I mm -hmm. tend to be a perfectionist. Um, I said last time I was glad for the time constraint. Same thing here. I was like, yeah. I'm going to put this together. That's good for me because I can be more creative if I'm not being really um, trying to be super exacting. So anyway, I yeah. liked it. I can see using it in the classroom. Thank you. How You're welcome. How, uh, how old are your students or what grade level? Second grade. A little or littler, yeah. um, but actually the scale of the newspaper of the magazine, excuse me, can be nice because it's a little shorter um, than when you're dealing with newspaper, which is a little harder for their hands to kind of like, you know, press and but this yeah, is we nice were talking too. about how it might be a little more sturdy. Uh huh. Uh -huh. than the newspaper a little less yeah. than we it, you know it, it really depends on what you have access to yeah. so you know that's whatever works and I love the big words that's really mm -hmm. nice Thanks. um so thank you is there another slide please Ooh, cool that one looks good uh oh is it is it Noel or no is it Noel you can unmute it is Noel. Okay, thank yeah. you. That looks great. I, I don't know about that, but thank you. <laughs> um, no, I, you know, it's it's a it's a very malleable thing that you can play with. You know, so if you said, oh, you know, I think the um, whatever the the opening of the basket was a little big. Well, then you learn, and then you can either cut, you can rip it or cut it and shorten it. I mean, this is you know, you can play with it. It's not done. Yeah, I really like until it's done. The one who did the magazine, she was in my group and I like yeah. the magazine. I had mentioned that I would prefer something firmer to work with than newspaper. Yeah. So um, maybe uh, cardstock. I guess it just depends on what you have access to. The reason I did the newspaper is I felt like it's cheap and people have it. Um, whereas like magazines can be very distracting, especially to like fourth and older. 
They just start <laughs> reading them, you know, and that can be really hard. Um, I find, you know, so I feel like the newspaper is not that interesting. And so it just becomes a material. Um, but, you know, it could be anything. It could be wrapping paper, paper. It could be brown paper. It's really what you have access to. If you have magazines and that works, I think that's great, you know. And how, how old are your students? High school. High school, okay. So, yeah, they can really handle lots of interesting concepts, um, multi-layered. I don't know if you see the dog prints. So I have abundance of dogs in my life. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> it's a good thing. So, um, yeah. That's why I put the paw print. I didn't get very far in decorating. But. Well, we didn't have a lot of time. So, but thank you for sharing. And thank you for coming, even that you're working very late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do an hour to get home. So I really don't get home in time. So yeah. I just stay and do it in my room. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so, so here's one. I really like this. This is, feels like a lot of love. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, whoever created this, you want to speak? Um, I decided to um, make these little hearts. Um, the lady that left um, kind of filled me with ideas. Yeah. And, um, one of the thoughts that I had, I teach fifth grade. Yeah. Was to have the students create these hearts and then, um, you know, put some kind words in them and everybody nice. could create a basket and they could fill their basket with kindness. I love that. I love that. I was like uh, really excited. And I thought, you know, they can, you know, of course, color it and, and uh -huh. put some nice words on there. And great. Everybody goes home with uh, some kind words that they can look at in case they feel down. Yeah. So, um, or yeah, whatever really they do. Because, you know, mm -hmm. I, I love that everyone's interpreting this, um, you know, to their class, to their needs. Um, how old are your students? You said fifth grade, didn't you just say that? Yeah, fifth grade. That'll be really nice. That'll be beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I really like that idea. I want to do that too. Um, <laughs> do that at a party. Uh, is there another picture of photograph to share or slideshow slide to share? Oh, the end. Um, okay. Uh, thank you for incorporating those images and sharing them. Um, how are we doing with time? Let's see. Oh, we have one minute. Uh, well, I just want to say thank you to everyone for showing up tonight. Um, it's been really great. I feel like I love the way you all interpret it in your own way. And I can, I hope that some of you will use this in the future. And the lesson plan, I think um, Laura said what is in the, um, is available in the curricular resources. Um, so if you want to kind of keep that so you won't forget it in the future. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Ooh, that's nice. Thank you. I also just wanted to say that um, the survey link is in the chat as well. So let us know what you thought of the project. Um, and if you're here for credit, make sure you sign that so we can keep track of your hours. Um, we love helping you out with your professional development. So yeah, this was inspiring. I loved hearing everybody's ideas and all the different ways and directions this part this project can take. So thanks so much, Katie. We appreciate you. We appreciate everyone who's here and um, happy baby Friday. I learned that today for the <laughs> baby Friday. So <laughs> have a good one, everybody. And we'll see you soon. Take care. Take care, everyone. Stay healthy. Bye.